Thank you and welcome to the show today. The topic this morning is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the 21st century. And of course we have to talk about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and where Dr. King stands in the 21st century, at the beginning of the 21st century, uh, Dr. Lewis V. Baldwin. Uh, Dr. Baldwin is a professor of religious studies at uh, Vanderbilt University. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, let me uh, welcome you to the show today. Yeah, great to be with you again. And to tell you, Dr. Baldwin, how delighted we are to have you. Great to uh, be here. Yeah. And, and, and it's good to have you because we're mm -hmm. going to deal with a, pro with a topic that I think to be uh, not only a topic that's made for you, but I think it's a very, very important topic because uh, what we want to try to do today is to look at Dr. Martin Luther King yes, yes. and his relationship with the uh, 21st century That's and to right. have you to do so. That's right. But now, Dr. Baldwin, before we do that, let's have you to give our audience, and there might be a few people okay. who might not know Dr. Lewis B. Baldwin from okay. this uh, show. I doubt if there are many yeah. but, uh, <laughs> who might not know you from this show, but give yeah. them some information in reference to your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in your life that okay. eventually le led you to uh, this particular seat. This well, morning. I uh, grew up in Camden Island. Alabama, Wilcox County, Alabama, which is known as the so-called Alabama Black Belt. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born there in 1949, grew up there, uh, attended the public schools, which of course were segregated at that time, uh, graduated from Camden Academy High School in 1967, and in high school I had an opportunity to participate in some of the demonstrations that were occurring in Alabama at that time, civil rights demonstrations. I uh, left uh, Camden Academy High School and I matriculated at Talladega College in Alabama and I graduated from Talladega in 1971 with a BA in history and went from there to Crowes Theological Seminary in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. From there to Northwestern University where I received a PhD in 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1984 I started writing about Dr. King yeah. and the mm -hmm. Civil Rights Movement. So I've been writing about, uh, uh, writing on that subject now for more than 20 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was inspired primarily by what I saw in Alabama and mm -hmm. in other in Mississippi during the uh, 1950s and 1960s mm -hmm. in terms of civil rights activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I was also inspired uh, to write by my own participation mm -hmm. because I had a chance not only to observe mm -hmm. but to participate in some of the demonstrations and to read the works of people like Martin Luther King yeah. Jr. Mm -hmm. and Malcolm X and and others who were involved in the movement and that served as quite an inspiration mm -hmm. for me to do my research mm -hmm. on the life of Dr. King and the Civil Rights mm -hmm. Movement. And so you've been involved uh, with, as you said, for the last 20 years. And yes. It indeed has really been a life work, yes. a scholarly work nevertheless, but it has been a life work with you in a real sense. Yes. And so Dr. Ball, what we'd like to do uh, today, as we said earlier, is to uh, look at uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and to sort of have you to update, uh, as we said mm -hmm. before, uh, we still believe that uh, the classic in terms of Dr. Martin Luther King is the uh, uh, piece that you gave us back in 1997 mm -hmm. called Martin Luther King. You see, mm -hmm. I don't think that we can top yeah. that. But <laughs> nevertheless, much has happened uh, since yeah. then. And yeah. of course, you've been with us on a number of occasions. Yeah. But this should give you an opportunity to uh, talk about Dr. King and why he's significant mm -hmm. for this uh, particular century. I'd like to talk about King on two levels. First. Uh, in terms of his meaningfulness for our times, and then to talk about uh, whether scholarship is going yeah. on Dr. King in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. uh, I always think, as I'm writing, and I'm writing four books on Dr. King now, mm -hmm. uh, some of which are collaborative efforts, mm -hmm. I'm working with other scholars, mm -hmm. but we all are moved from the premise that Dr. King is indeed meaningful for mm -hmm. the 21st mm -hmm. century, mm -hmm. because many of the issues he tried to address, or many of the issues he addressed, in the 1950s and 60s are still with us. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue of race mm -hmm. uh, has not been resolved. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. King, as you well know, saw race as one of the great barriers to human community. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still addressing that particular issue. Mm -hmm. uh, we are addressing the issue of poverty. Mm -hmm. And I think the uh, recent tragedy Good. in New Orleans mm -hmm. highlighted in a very serious way mm -hmm. Uh, the problem of poverty, of mm -hmm. classism, of economic Good. inequality in this mm -hmm. country. And Dr. King always said that another ma major barrier to human community is poverty and economic injustice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we're still dealing with this whole issue of what Dr. King once called the haves and the have-nots. Have okay. And this growing gap, these, this, mm -hmm. these growing disparities between those who have and mm -hmm. those who 
do not have. But I think the problem of poverty has gotten in some ways even worse mm -hmm. since his time. Mm -hmm. When you look at the problem of homelessness, for mm -hmm. an example. So I think his ideas about how to deal with poverty uh, mm -hmm. are relevant today mm -hmm. and, and also when it comes to the issue of war. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot in this country about creating a culture of peace, mm -hmm. a culture of life, but mm -hmm. Dr. King was about that. Mm -hmm. This is what his whole nonviolent philosophy was about. This is what the nonviolent crusades he led in the streets mm -hmm. were about. He was about creating a culture of peace, about mm -hmm. creating a culture of life what he called the beloved community. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to understand him at that level. Okay, well, let's, let's hold it right there, Dr. Baldwin, for this first commercial break, and then we'll allow you to pick that up. And mm -hmm. we'll be back with you following this very, very short commercial break. ...that has lost...